Today, because there, this pandemic has everybody wondering what's going to happen. But we know we've got God on our side. And so everything will come out all right as long as we stay with the Lord. I'm going to do an opening prayer before my lesson, and I pray that you will just pray it on with us. Our Father and our God, we ask that we don't put a cloud over our faces between heaven and earth. It's our prayer that you will bless us through this trying time. And Father, we appreciate those who bring us the news, Haley Jackson and Andrea Mitchell, but most of all, we thank you because you have done so much for us. And we just say to you, thank you. Our nation is unfixed right now, and we just need your helping hand and that you would bless us and let our faith be strong that we might do your divine will. Thank you very much. In the name of your son do we pray, amen. amen. As I said earlier, many hearts are heavy because we just don't know what's going on. People are still dying uh, from this pandemic that's around us, but we certainly want them to know that uh, those who have loved ones have gone on to a resting place where they would have to meet God later. It's our prayer that people today will get become aware and get ready because God is the one in control. If we ever get out of this soon, it's going to be because of the hand of God and not man. And so I say to us all, yeah, God, who created heaven and earth, he did more than that. While he was doing what he was doing, he gave us uh, men that would go and study to become doctors and nurses and uh, uh, pharmaceutical people who make our medicine for us, and we thank you for that. But God, we don't want to think that our medicine is better than you or stronger than you. We always want to know that we are dependent on God, and we realize that we need him. And uh, he made disciples, and he trained those disciples to teach us what he want us to teach, the balance of our lives in, on earth and in the church. And so I say to you, listen to the lesson this morning. I'm not trying to fuss at anybody, but I certainly want all of us to know 
because there were some folk out there that got some of our relatives all confused about going to heaven. We want to tell the truth. We want them to know that God's word is sure. And don't worry about it doing what God wanted to do because his word has all kind of power. There is power in the word of God. Turn your Bibles now to Matthew chapter 1 and we're going to chapter 10 and we're going to look at verse number 1 and we're going to break these verses off as we go through them. The Bible says, when he had called his disciples, he called the disciples, he selected those men in Matthew chapter 10. And I just want to, to show you some things that God has already done. God has already planned this and he he wants us to live according to the teachings of his plan, not my plan. The Bible shows us that there are some folk deceiving people even today. But I want to challenge those folk who are supposed to be healers. I call them fake healers because God's word is strong enough for us to stand on his word. And his word is divine. His word is exactly what he wanted us to do and to speak. It's strange to me how these healers, knowing this pandemic is tearing up cities and governments and all of that, but I want you to understand, they ought to be in line at the hospital to go in with their power, but they don't have the power. They don't have it and they won't have it. When God gave the disciples, called the disciples, the Bible says that he gave them power to heal all manner of sickness and diseases. And I find that these men are deceiving folk, standing up there saying, I will heal you. And they blow in your face and they let you fall back in their arms and they tell you to get up and throw your crutches away and walk. But I'll stop to tell you today, that's not what God wanted. He gave his disciples power over all sicknesses, all diseases. He could even help them to see that they have a true God. And I'm listening to it. We are spending some uh, $3 trillion and they just ask for more money to go out and help the poor. I mean, what are we doing? We need to recognize that these fake healers that's telling you they can do this to you and make you do that, and I, I, it's, just, it's just bad. And when he had called his disciples again, I say to you, he gave them power against unclean spirits, all manner of sicknesses. They could cast out all these diseases that people had, and those that were ill and Woman with the issue of blood. Jesus let her get close enough to touch the hem of his garment. And she knew that she had been revived by the Lord because she trusted in God. What in the world are we fighting against right now? All these healers around town. And I want them to know I'm not ashamed. You say you can do it then you ought to be out at the hospital doing what you say you can do. But you can't do it, and you know you can't do it, but you don't want those followers of yours to think that you don't have the power. You don't have the power. And we're letting them know today that they need to understand that this uh, uh, virus is hitting this town and other big cities. We want you to know that you need God, and that's what's been happening over the years. Over the years, first of all, they took the prayer out of school. But I always told my kids, don't worry about it. If you want to pray, you don't have to move your mouth. God hears what you're saying because he knows what you're thinking about. The devil never apologizes for telling you a lie. But here's what some of the folk are doing to claim that they have the power to heal. When it doesn't go like they think it should, they'll say, well, someone's faith is not right. You don't have enough faith. We must know that I have faith enough to know that God is my supplier. He provides everything that we need. 
Jesus taught those disciples to do their job, and they did their job well. And so I want to talk to you this morning about uh, perseverance. We must persevere. We must not turn away from God. We must look right into the word of God and study his word. The more you study, the stronger we become in the word. And that's all he wants us to do, go into all of the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We must be about telling the truth. Folk going to get upset about it, but let's tell the truth because that's what God wants us to do. What is perseverance then? It is a resolution made by an individual to do the things that the word of God say for him or her to do. Perseverance is just saying that it, with God, all things are possible, and God will help us to go in the right direction. We must be determined. Perseverance says that we must be determined. None of us have to do wrong, but we, can, we have a way to fight against the devil and what God has given us, the power to deal uh, with that devil. When we look at the word from God from Proverbs chapter 11, in verse 25, the Bible says, many need refreshment. That's Solomon talking. And he said, he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. All I want to do is to tell the truth and be refreshed by God. Then we must be steadfast, unmovable. Be steadfast and don't let anybody, anything, or any one person cause you to turn from God. We just don't study the Bible. and We need to study that more. Be constant in service. You can't hit and miss and call yourself a child of God. You can't just say, well, I don't have to go to church to be saved. Well, the Lord built the church so that he could add the saved to the church. Now, you are at that point with God, but you're going you're gonna to have to have it all together before you get to heaven. Because he's going to tell you, depart from me, I never knew you. So study the word of God that you might come to understand that what God wants us to do is be faithful and our light shall shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify the Father which is on high. Friends, this is our time to look over our lives. This is our time to say, look, Something has struck this world. It's a worldwide pandemic going on. We need to study the word of God and get back to the Bible. Back to the Bible will help us. When God called those disciples, he said to them, I'm going to fix it where you won't have any problems. Teach the word. Preach the word. Live the life. And the disciples had to do what God Another thing I think we ought to understand, there must be some fidelity in our life. We must let the world know we are not ashamed to be a member of the Church of Christ. And I'm not. I am so happy to be a member of the Church of Christ. And it might, it might bother you, but it doesn't bother you to tell me what church you belong to. But the minute I say Church of Christ, you're ready to walk off. If you got good news, share it with me. And if I'm wrong, I'm willing to admit my wrong. But you are not. You don't even want to talk to anybody in the Lord's church. Be fervent. You, need, that, that you must have some uh, uh, ability in you to make you want to be on time every time that it comes up time for you to do what you want to do for the Lord. That must be a daily practice of kindness, of love, of helpfulness, and most of all, something about the master who gave his only begotten son that he may die for us, be a sin for us, that in the end, after we've obeyed the gospel, we can go home to live with him throughout ceaseless ages. Daily prayer is what the world needs right now. I don't hear too many folk on TV talking about let us pray. Let us pray. We need prayer early in the morning, noontime, evening time, nighttime, at midnight. If you get up, you need to thank God that you're able to function like he had, had us 
walking around ourselves. This is a daily uh, uh, perseverance. We must persevere, we must stand, we must pray, and we must pray for the world. Yes, I'm praying for President Trump. He needs prayer. And when a person got a big old weight on his shoulder like he has now, I say to you, and I don't speak evil of him, I just pray for him, because that's what the Bible tells me to do, pray for him. And I'm saying to even Trump, if he could hear this message, you need to listen to the word of God, turn from wrongdoing, and go to doing what's right. I suggest that as people set their clocks to make sure they get up on time to get to their job, set your clock a few minutes earlier so you can have your prayer time with the Lord. He is good. He wants us to live the kind of life that he let his son come and show us how it is to be lived. It is my prayer that I can lift your spirits today. Those who have got loved ones that they will never see again. I'm saying to you, I know people go to funerals and they say, well, they're in a better place now. They're in heaven. My goodness. You run in God's business now. You got to wait and let God do this himself. But watch what he says to us when we look at verse number 8. For everyone that asketh receiveth. That's what he says. And he that seeketh will find. But I want you to understand that the person who knocks on the door, the door will be open. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 2, the Bible teaches us that you and I must share a truth with the word. Bearing one another's burdens. We're trying to lift your burden. Read your Bible. And it's hard sometimes to read when you're worried about your problems, your bills, and whether or not you're going to have a job tomorrow, and whether or not you're going to have food to eat tonight. That's a lot of worry. But people that's got children, they got a double worry. They got the wife and the children. Then they got to worry about taking care of their children and keeping them in in such a way that they won't catch this virus. Oh, we just need to show our love to our children and let them know that God is on our side. And as long as we have him on our side, we are going to be successful. If you really want to be successful in life, get a life with Christ. Get a, a, a relationship with Christ. And you, you, you're not with Christ just because you walk in a building. This building is not the church. The church is in us. And we must carry the church wherever we go. Therefore, Brother Shaw, as a preacher, you need to let your light shine as well. You must let the light shine. And people must know that you believe in God and you love God. And you're not going to do anything contrary to the teachings of Christ. We must know for sure that the Bible is God's word. But now let me show you what, what God did for us. Knowing already what was going to happen to us in the years to come, way long after he created this world, God thought about it and he, he saw man, after he made man and man was standing, God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I'll make him a help meet. What a joy. And you know, when you got a Christian wife, that's your help me. And you need to love that wife just like you love yourself. That's what the Bible said. Husband, love your wife. Even as Christ also loved the church, Ephesians chapter 5, and gave himself for it. I'm willing right now to let my wife know that if she doesn't want to go to heaven, I do. So if I have to go without her, guess who I'm going to find? I'll be with the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and his Father. I suggest that all of us think real serious during this time of trying. I have never in my life been to a store and couldn't find what I wanted. Never in my life. This makes me think again as a minister of God. Don't be ashamed of the word of God. For the word of God is quick. Is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. And so we need, to, we need to hang on to the word of God. Now in that word of God, Jesus promised to build his church. 
I'm so glad. Matthew chapter 16 and 18. Upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell. Satan can't tear it down. Shall not prevail against it. And I want us to know. As preachers. You got to be bold. God don't want a coward in the pulpit. He don't want, and he don't want me just up here trying to beat up on folks. He want me to give you the word and let you see what the word has to say. For the word overrules me. Whatever I say must be predicated upon the word of God. It must be chosen from God's book, divine, so I'll know what I need to do in order to please God. Every night, every night, I don't go out deliberately doing anything wrong, but every night I say, God, if I have done, if I have said anything contrary to your will, please forgive me. Help me to know what it was and help me to remember the time that it happened so that I can make sure that I'm doing what God wants me to do. That's what it's all about. Jesus never argued with anybody. He just told Peter, get behind me, Satan. You're an offense to me. And until you get your act together, you're going to have to do something different than what you've been doing. When Jesus was talking about having to die, Peter said, no, no, no. You, you, we're not going to see that. We're not going to let that happen to you. And that's when Jesus said, get back there where you belong. I am God's son. And God loved me enough to give me the power to do what he wanted me to do. I want me to do it. Let me correct that. He want me to do it. And he wanted him to teach the disciples. And he wanted the disciples to hold to the word and teach the word of God. Isn't that wonderful? Now, i tell you something. The reason the world is all bombarded today is because some folk think that they can make the church better. How in the devil are you going to make the church better and the church is the body of Christ, and you can't do nothing to improve Christ. So I say to us, I say to us, we really need to trust in God. We really need to study the word of God so that we won't be doing things that will cause harm on the body of Christ. This church is concerned about everybody. We pray for all of those that's laying up in the hospital right now with this coronavirus, we're praying for them. And we had prayer this morning before we started doing this lecture. And I tell you one thing, all of us know that God does not hear a sinner's prayer. And so we try to get those who know by the life they live, we know by the life they live, that they are saints, they're children of God. And so I say to us, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to do this and do that. I can't heal you. I can only pray to God that he will use his power. And I'll tell you something that you need to really think about. The only person that can get rid of this virus is God. If he blesses the doctor to go to school, get his degree and study, and, and then get those pharmaceutical men who want to be uh, uh, pharmacists, to study the medicine, get the right things to give us, they can do it. It's all been God. It's all been God. But somebody, somebody decides that we can live the life. Have you ever heard a person say, this is my life, and I can live it the way I want to live it? No, you can't. No, you can't. And then some folk have the uh, ability to say, uh, the attitude to say, uh, I, 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 can, I can make my own decisions. If you make your own decisions, you'll be in a worse effect than you are now if you are going astray. Then I'd like to just include this. Those who have wandered away from the house of the Lord, the church of Christ, you need to come home. You need to repent, ask God's forgiveness, because I'm a strong believer. I can't prove it about who started it. I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm a strong believer that God can take care of anything that we ask. He said, ask, Matthew chapter 7, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. 
Knock, and the door will be open. But you know what God requires when he does things for us? He wants us to go and do at the house of God what we've been missing and take care of that. Oh, you can't, you can't, you can't beat God giving. You can't beat him. And the more you share with the world, the better off we're going to be at the judgment. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to sit down by the Father and just sit there with an amazement. God is so good. Knowing the things that I did when I was younger, I'll tell you one thing. It was a good God that forgave me. And he's still forgiven. He hasn't changed. His son came, suffered, bled, and died on the cross that you and I might have a right to eternal life. And he never frowned at us one time. When knowing that Judas was a, 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 a thief and going to deceive him and betray him, he never looked at Judas with a cross eye. He just said to Judas the day he was sitting there, whatever it is, you need to get up and go and do it now. The disciples was asked one time, Jesus was feeling so down in spirit. And he took, took three disciples with him. And he said, tarry here. I'm going yonder and pray. He went and prayed. And the Bible tells us that he prayed an hour. When he came back, guess what? Those he trusted, I said those he trusted, were asleep. Were asleep. He said, couldn't you not watch with me one hour? Went back again. Did it three times. He came back. They were doing the same old thing they were also the first time, sleeping. You know what he said? <clears throat> Sleep on now. Sleep on. I have somebody coming after me right now. He walked on, made him carry his cross. When he couldn't bear it, they got somebody, Simon, to help him. And when Simon grabbed that, cross went on up. They laid it down and nailed him to it. Raised him up. Blood coming from the wounds of his hand and his feet. And the planted a crown of thorns about his head. Blood coming down his face. And somebody didn't see enough blood. One of the soldiers with his spear pierced him in his side. And out of his side came forth blood and water. That water's the wa water's the water my sins away. That blood was to clean all my sins up off of me. So we had detergent. And that was the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that you must, you must obey God. You have heard the word. The word has been taught this morning. You must believe it. And if you believe it, you should make known to somebody in the churches of Christ that you are ready to make a change in your life. I was a denomination of person before I became a member of the church. But when I listened to the teaching and I decided that I'm going to study it for myself and I found a lot of things that we were practicing over there and I obeyed the gospel and I said I will never leave the church until he calls me out. God bless you. After you can have believed in the Lord, repent of your sins. Repent of your sin. That means, God, I want it all off of me. You know how you know how David said it? Create within me a clean heart up here, not down here. A clean heart. And give me a right understanding. David did a lot of things wrong. But if God can forgive David, God can forgive you, me, and all of other people around us. And so I tell you, confess that Jesus Christ is God's son. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. That's what you have to confess. You have to confess your sins. He already know what they were. But confess Jesus Christ as God's son. And then this water stay ready to baptize people. Baptize folk into Christ. There's a church of Christ somewhere near you. I invite you, if you want to do what's right, go to the churches of Christ. Ask them to help you to understand, and I'll tell you something. All of them that I know will gladly help you. All of them. 
And I know, and we got brothers in the church. We'll help you. We can't be jealous about each other. We must work with each other. And I'm trying my best to get things to come together where we would all be in unity. That's why the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's my desire. And looking at this thing going on like it is right now, we must help our brothers grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you for listening. I'm fixing to have my prayer and ask God to continue to bless you, bless all those in the hospitals, wherever they are. Even overseas, people are dying. All over this world, we need help. And the best help we can get is the hand of God. Let's pray. God, you're so good to us. All of this, we still are able to make do with your word. Your word is powerful. And even though we're not all together here, we're praying for the day that we can all be back together in worship service, worshiping in spirit and in truth. And I'm trusting, Father, that this has made us real sure that when I get an opportunity to get back, I'm going to serve the Lord with all the gusto I can. Thank you, Father. Thank you for these brothers who have come to encourage us tonight, uh, this morning. And thank you for uh, Brother Boyd recording. We just want the people to know we stand on the truth. And we are praying for all of our ministers who have turned from Christ and gone a different way. You need to come back. We pray for our president that he would look at himself and realize there's somebody greater than him. And that's God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for this world you've let us enjoy. We're not enjoying it like we like, but this is a lesson all of us in Christ better get it together. Girdle up yourself and get out and do God's will. In the name of Christ, I ask you to bless us. Amen. Amen. Now we come to part of our service that we share the Lord's broken body and shed the blood. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians. Chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. And it reads, For I received of the Lord that I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do remembrance of me. At the same manner also he took the cup, when he is up, saying, This cup of New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do share the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, who shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread. And drank of that cup. For he that eateth and drank it unworthily, eateth and drank a damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. More gracious Heavenly Father, we come humble ourselves before your throne, Father. Thanking you, Father, for your darling son who died, that we might have a right to eternal life. Father, we wish you to bless this bread and to bless this cup. And bless those, Father, that will take of it, that they understand the reason why they are doing so. These blessings we ask in your daughter's son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now we come to the part of our service that we're supposed to give back to the Lord. I'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, 
for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let us go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you, Father. Thank you, Father, for jobs and whatever income that we got coming in that we may be able to give back to you. At this time, Father, we ask you to bless these offerings that they go for spreading the gospel, edification of the church. In Christ Jesus' name, we wish you blessings, our blessings. Amen. Again, we want to uh, thank all of those that have uh, called on the conference call and is listening uh, right now. We thank you for that. And for those who are uh, viewing this right now, we thank you for, for viewing us this morning. I stand before you to uh, give out the special request and state that those have those that have sent in their special request, uh, their prayer request, I'm going to read those at this time, and then we will have a word of prayer on behalf of them, after which we will have Brother Charleston Boyd who will come and close this program out. We had a special prayer request from Sister Beverly Stone uh, she is requesting prayer for her family. She is also requesting prayer for her stepmom, who is very, very sick, and they are getting ready to put her on hospice. And so she is asking to please pray for her family and her stepmother. We are also asking that you pray for Sister Monique Hill. She states that she has uh, sinned, and she has repented of that sin, and she is asking for prayer at this time. And then lastly, we ask that you please pray for uh, Sister Douglas. Sister Douglas is not feeling well uh, at this time. And so we're asking you to please pray for her as well. Now let's go to our Heavenly Father in a word of prayer on behalf of these souls. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you at this time. First of all, just thanking you, Lord, for blessing us to see this day that was not promised. And we ask the Heavenly Father to please be with those souls who sent in their requests. Be with them, dear Heavenly Father, and bless them in the blessings that they stand in need of. Be with Sister Stone, dear Heavenly Father. Be with her family. And please be with her stepmother. We know, dear Heavenly Father, that you are the all-time great physician. And so if it be your will, dear Heavenly Father, that you restore her stepmother's health, we ask you to do so. Dear God, we also come to you asking you to please be with Sister Hill. Please watch over her, forgive her of her sins, and bless her, dear Heavenly Father, that she will not return to those things that caused her to sin. Dear God, we ask you to please, dear Lord, be with Sister Douglas at this time. Sister Douglas is not feeling well physically, and we just ask you, Lord, to please heal her physical body. And even though, Lord, we only had those requests, we know, dear Heavenly Father, that we all need your help right now. So I come to you asking you, Lord, to please be with each and every one of us those that sent in the request and those that did not. We're just asking you, Lord, to watch over us. We know that you know everything that goes on in our lives. And so if there's anything to Heavenly Father that we need help with, we ask you to please help us. Forgive us of our sins. Watch over us, guide us, and protect us. Be with us, be with these souls who have come. And just watch over them and bless them as you see fit. For it is in Christ Jesus' name I do pray that all in agreement say, Amen. We say to you, Brother Shaw, thank you for the message. We say to both the listening and the viewing audience, thank you for uh, being present. We ask that you would bow with us as we go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father and God Almighty, we come at this time preparing, Heavenly Father, to leave this service that we have rendered unto you. 
And though we close it out with a prayer, Heavenly Father, we know it still remains open because this is the Lord's day. And all through this day, Heavenly Father, as we come making requests of you, because we know we will, because we know we need you every second and every hour of the day. We pray, God, that you will hear the requests that be made known, that our lives will be in accordance to your will and that you will bless us according to your will. We thank you for the message and the messenger. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to come before those that are hearing and seeing, to be able to give them the hope, give us all the hope that we need to know that, God, you are still on the throne, your darling son sitting right beside you in the Holy Spirit dwelling with us, that we may be able to have a guide to direct us in the path that we should follow while we're here on this sin-cursed world. We ask, God, that we remember that you're there, that we will continue to keep our hand in your hand as you walk us and guide us in the direction that we should follow, that we will not grow weary in well-doing. As already has been mentioned, please, God, please bless our government and all those that lead us in this government. As we are subject to their rule, help us, Heavenly Father, to make the right decisions through prayer and be ready at all times, Heavenly Father, to do what your will is to be done as we follow what man's laws have for us to do. Thank you for all that has been done here today. Everyone that has participated and made this program possible. Be with all those who have made acknowledgments. Be with us all because we all need you every minute, every, it's already been said, every hour, every second of the day. God, keep on our breakfast as we go forward throughout the furtherance of this day and throughout the furtherance of this week. With all those things that are going on with this virus, Almighty God, we pray, we pray special prayers for the families that have lost loved ones and weren't even able to be with them. Amen. We know there are hardships that are going on. Let us be there for whatever manner of support that we can give. But mostly, let us be there in prayer because we know that prayer changes things. Amen. These things we ask in the name of your wonderful and darling Son, Jesus Christ, our wonderful and darling Savior. Amen.